I'm Mark Hayek, CEO of Blancpain, and today we're talking Blancpain with Teddy Baldazar. Mark, well, thank you very much for opening your doors up to us in this beautiful brand. Could you explain first, before we go into some of these workshops, where are we currently and what is done inside of these uh, you know, corridors here? Yeah, pleasure. We are in uh, the Valle du Chaux and more precisely in Le Brassu, uh, what we know as the Ferme of Blanca. Um, here we do, uh, as we will see, uh, all our high complicated uh, pieces, uh, métier d'art, decoration, vintage, so it's really the heart of uh, what gives the, the soul, what they call it, to the watches. So you're a true manufacturer, so you're yes. producing components a uh, little ways away still in the Valley de Joux, and yes. they're brought here, and then for some of these high complications, this is really where that work starts. So this is Absolutely. showing that high level capability that this brand has to offer here. Absolutely, that, that's where we are. Yeah, we are in a workshop uh, for tourbillon, carousel and uh, the Chinese calendar. So uh, some of our most complicated pieces. What does the complication itself mean for Bon Pan? I mean, this is mm. something that has a lot of romantic connection to your past, right? Absolutely. That's still something that uh, you know, it, I think every watchmaker heart beats uh, a bit higher because it's uh, uh, mythical pieces that have been developed. Uh, uh, most of them hundreds of years ago, and uh, you continue to, 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 to get them closer to perfection. Uh, I say most of them because, for example, Chinese calendar is a new complication. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but it's uh, you know pure tradition of how uh, a watch has uh, has been done. Uh, means uh, there's no production lines, uh, as you see here. There is really one watchmaker uh, per watch, per watch, and uh, for me that's. The first owner, personally for me, is the watchmaker of the watch and mm -hmm. is handing it over if you uh, produce it and work like in this way. How many watchmakers roughly in this department? Uh, four, depending a bit on mm -hmm. demand, four to five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean the amount of people that can even do this level of work for these type of complications is slim. Yes. Yeah, they're not many, not no. many at all. No, they're not many. Um, that's uh, because it, it's more than just um, you know the technical side. It's uh, the passion I think you need to have. You have to have a passion to, to, uh, you know, to keep your motivation and to love spending so many hours. You know, we go to an extreme uh, high complication, it's almost a year that I spend on one watch. Hmm. Uh, and if you think no, then it's not for you. Even maybe you're great techni technically. So it's a special mindset mm -hmm. um, and uh, special people. And that's what's also that's what makes it great. That's why for me to watch like this gets a soul. Uh, you know, it's, it's not just pieces of metal assembled. When it comes to the most romantic complications, I don't think it gets much higher than this. Where are we at now? Now we are in the workshop for the minute repeaters. Mm -hmm. Everything that, that sounds smallest. And uh, as you said, yeah, it's, for me it's, what's, it's uh, fascinating because it's uh, not really how you normally do a watch. Uh, it, you need a, the ear uh, from the sound adjusting. You cannot just do it the same way two times. When you're trying to conceptualize this idea, because I think when people hear about minute repeaters and repeaters, they think about just the, the tone itself. But could you talk a little bit about just the challenge and the meticulous thought process that goes into these watchmakers that be able to even get the tone perfect. The, the, all the little details have to be right. Can you give us some, a sense to that? Yeah, that's that's actually, you know, it starts with the conception uh, and as you say, very, very radical. Um, first you start and say, okay, we measure decibel, easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it sounds stronger and better. And with big surprise sometimes, uh, you have uh, a measure that is higher, but the sound is not good mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem strong. So there's so much more in it. It's the, the tonality. Uh, the balance, the clearness of the sound. It's not just the strength. And that's what you try with the materials, with the uh, development of the movement. And then you do the watch, and uh, that's when it's perfectly adjusted. And it's impossible that each of them sound 100% identical. Uh, they ha th there is little differences, and that's the watchmaker. Even from the same watchmaker, there's slight differences and uh, from the material properties. So, each, each one um, yeah, gets all here and not well adjusted, not well toned, 
for the year and that takes a lot of time and again that's not something you can say okay I learn it and everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a musician, yes you can learn notes but you cannot become a Beethoven. Uh, it's, it's something you, you Again, you need to, to Put have. Put that skill set to motion, how do you do yeah. that? That's, that's a whole other ball game, that's another way yeah. to, have to go about it. Yeah. And, um, this, and this is one of these few brands in the industry that is being able to handle these type of you know, really master complications as well. I mean, this is unique to be able to even do this in a you know, facility like this and uh, be able to make this happen. And you, know, you see here just the small little details of fine tuning it, making sure that the gong is being hit in the proper place and the hammers are striking in the right manner and that it's reverberating the sound, the casing. What does the process look like for this? Like, What is the timetable for creating a watch like this from a design to end completion? Hmm. Um, we're actually working on something like this that should, uh, I hope, uh, come out soon mm -hmm. and it's over already over seven years. Seven years. Uh, so uh, seven years you're normally lucky. Uh, I realize now the plan was but it's more, uh, this goes more eight, nine uh, to be honest uh, to really get it, uh, to get it better than what you have. <laughs> Now we're looking at finishing of components and one thing I think is very important to stress even further is not only are you manufacturing these products, you're also of course doing all of the finishing work on these individual components. This is really getting down to the detail. One thing I really admire as well is when you're looking at like a base plate, there's, there's things in finishing techniques that you do that no one is going to see it <laughs> yep. until, until it's maybe back for service years and years and years later, but that work is still being done. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more though about this room, you know, what, what are the watchmakers working on, some of the, the details about the tools they use, the finishing techniques, you know, what is done here? Yeah, that's, uh, as you said, yeah, our uh, decoration uh, department. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, we yeah, have one of the most uh, interesting, I agree, mm -hmm. and uh, passionate because you really go back to, to not only tools what you think as tools, mm -hmm. but uh, raw materials that you find in nature because you don't get uh, uh, a mirror polish today, not even with the paper from Micron. Mm -hmm. um, you need your you know, traditional uh, ways, otherwise you, don't, you cannot repeat, you cannot get to the same finish on certain components uh, that it should be in a high-end traditional watch. And um, that's also why, as I said before, the watchmaker is for me the first owner and um, the decoration inside of the uh, on pieces you don't see is just you know we straight truthful to whatever and you you produce a piece you pass the biggest part of your life uh, of a whole year on a watch and I say nah you know this side the client doesn't see it we don't decorate mm -hmm. I, that's just against your nature I want to also stress this like the tools themselves here are customized by the watchmaker themselves yes. to be able to do these tasks. The wood even created here, can you tell us about within the region how that yeah. is so special? That's the Jean Sien that actually uh, is here as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's at the evening I think for after yeah. we had <laughs> yeah. alcohol yeah. 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 because yeah. there's an alcohol yes. uh, mm -hmm. being made with this and uh, it's a wood that uh, you see it by the, it's a very very special uh, composition, very light, uh, almost like a balsa mm -hmm. and uh, that you get actually only with this um, from this region. Uh, the finish um, that, that they're looking for. So uh, you have to go find them and collect from them because it's not, it's not uh, something you can just buy or uh, that is uh, cultivated really. Mm -hmm. uh, it's found out in, in the forest, mm -hmm. in the nature. And types of finishing techniques you're seeing here is you have black polishing, you have mm -hmm. your diamond paste, and yeah. uh, you know, I was learning about this process. I mean, it could take, I mean, this is still being applied you know, to each individual component and then to create that friction, to allow that to really create that mirroring polish, hours a watchmaker is spending yeah. on an individual component. Yes. You know, we're talking hundreds of components and they're doing this yeah. on one small part, so <laughs> it, it's crazy amount of detail. And then you look at Cote de Genève, Perlage finishing, I mean, all of these components, this is where you start to get to that next level. And when yeah. people ask, you know, what am I getting with my watch? Yeah. This, these are the details that you start to see really matter and go that extra mile. Absolutely, you mm -hmm. see also, when mm -hmm. you talk about Perlage, mm -hmm. uh, if you do it, you know, sometimes that's what you see, you see sometimes also very old machines, uh, very high tech mm -hmm. because you need precision where you need it. But a pearl lush, you will never get the light play is because it's not a hundred percent identical to pressure and size on, on each pearl lush. You only get that if you do it the old way manual. And uh, that's, that's things we do here because again, that's the first view. 
Don't mm -hmm. see the difference. But the more you play with, the more you discover, the more life it has. And uh, that's just uh, what Blanc is. So here we are in our workshop uh, from the Métier d'Art. And i um, actually very proud that we have quite a lot of different uh, techniques that we are uh, capable of uh, offering. What type of techniques uh, you know, are, are you really proud of and what is this brand known for? I mean, we see enameling, we see you know, engraving, and can you give us some more detail about this? Yeah, yeah as I mentioned, yeah, enamel, uh, naturally painting on enamel mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is the model, is something I have to do, engraving, that's fantastic, I uh, really have uh, the chance to have great artists here. Uh, with us, but um, for me personally, what is always uh, exciting and special, we're trying to bring over techniques to the watchmaking that are not actually uh, necessarily traditional, existing or still alive or, st or were in watchmaking, mm -hmm. like uh, Shakudo, for example, uh, that's, that's coming from Japan mm -hmm. and uh, was not really in watchmaking um, because you have a lot of uh, also the engraving uh, side of on arms, arms in, in, in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, traditional. So we are trying to, to bring also that uh, different techniques or develop different new techniques, Grisai de Noc, something that we did, so a different way with the uh, Mother of Pearl uh, working and uh, engraving and uh, also give the space to the artists that are here to propose you know, uh, new techniques, new things, because uh, again, I think this is something that uh, you definitely don't do just by, okay, you have to copy something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's developing. It starts also, uh, there are all unique pieces. So it starts with, uh, with normally with the client um, by designs, uh, purely and designs, drawings, uh, finding uh, what he wants to write pieces and, and then realizing it. So the process is, in many cases, an individual will come to you with an idea yes. in their mind and they will ask to have something potentially created and then you go through the process of how can we feasibly pull this off? Does yeah. it make sense for us to pull this off? And then you make it a feat that you want to go and accomplish this. What does that timetable usually look like? I'm sure it varies depending on, on the specific project, but I'm sure it's very involved. And how do you rationalize a one piece you know, unique? I mean, that's, it has to be very grueling. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it can go uh, yeah, between a few months, three, four months, uh, something that is uh, clear and, and, and uh, closer to to, to things known, to uh, way over a year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, naturally there's a little bit of price on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for once, uh, not mainly on the complication on the movement, but mainly on the, on, on the artwork, what is uh, in a big part on dials. Uh, so, uh, but um, there's a lot of heart uh, from everybody in as well, because uh, you know, that's when you really get the sparkle in the eyes, what we were talking. Uh, as well, the, you know, the, fun, the, the emotion. And um, for me, that's something that we just have to offer and keep, keep alive and something that has to be individual because, you know, you can do it a bit easier. We do sometimes styles like this, you have to show, uh, mm -hmm. to propose. But I hate if somebody says, oh, I, I, yeah, I want this. So, you know, the whole beauty of it is that it's you, that it's individual, not that it's just a unique piece that is pre-done, uh, you know, for, not for you. Mm -hmm. And the process is actually, I think, the, the biggest part of it is creating it with the artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think that's, that's vital that you keep that. And that's why uh, I'm really pushing, we really try having most, I would say 80% or uh, 90% are uh, individual, not pre done scenes that we sell. And you talk about the individual, both from the end consumer's risk, but also yes. the individual is here too, because each one of Absolutely. these artisans is specialized in a certain area. They, they are multi-faceted yes. you know, in terms of their skill set, yes. but if you're going in here, you can see someone who's really perfected these arts and these crafts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have uh, natural different talents, mm -hmm. uh, different techniques, but as you said, uh, not exclusive, so, uh, but different styles. And uh, that's also to find out who works with who when you have a client, you know, to say, mm, uh, that will, not match hmm. uh, the style, probably the best. Um, so that's a thought process. Feedback, so, yeah. when you, so when someone gives you an idea, you also think yeah, about the, the idea or the feedback. That you know, you see uh, feedback. Um, you know, in certain scenes, no, more central, more uh, this that you see. Oh, probably that's not going to go in the right. You know, they don't find each other from the style. Mm -hmm. So then you can even switch. Uh, normally, it doesn't happen. You see it before. Uh, what kind of uh, design or, or, or scene is wanted? Uh, that is 
better on, on one and by themselves. So, uh, uh, this is me. <laughs> Thank as well. So, Mark, to begin, I've always said that prestige brands from Swatch are these prized jewels, and I, I think they're almost underappreciated in a way. And I, I really do adore these brands, the Bon Pond, of course, being one of them. What do you try to stress when trying to articulate why is this brand so special? Yeah, for me, it's um, one side because uh, that's very, very personal because uh, Blanca was uh, with uh, Jean Jacques Fichte in the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, headed by a, a diver, a pioneer, and uh, that's how the 50 Fathom was born as, a, as an instrument, actually, not, not really as a watch. And uh, I'm a very passionate diver mm -hmm. um, and found. Uh, we kind of found each other with Bob, and uh, that was uh, for me something special personally mm -hmm. uh, because I think it's this iconic brand that you know, opened uh, uh, the diving world, uh, the recreational diving world, um, with, uh, with this develop development. And uh, that's something very close to me, and uh, it's fantastic to be able to bring that to the 21st century. And um, on the other side, I think it's uh, also a very, very complete brand. It's, um, the heart is really the movement, so we are doing 100% in-house. We're not working with uh, development from, uh, from external sources, from developers, so it gives you another possibility, another, um, I would say, closeness to, to your DNA uh, automatically. And um, for me that's, that's fantastic because the watch is first, technology first instrument uh, mm -hmm. for me. And uh, sure, must be beautiful and, and uh, we are happy with a commercial success, but uh, that's the consequence of it. The heart uh, is uh, really the, the movement, the development, the, t the technology. And um, to have that 100% in-house is uh, something that is uh, quite unique, quite special, that you start with really the best raw material, material and not uh, any uh, components really uh, pre-done. Uh, this combination for me makes Bompa quite special. Uh, yeah, you hear the word manufacture thrown around so loosely in this industry, <laughs> but yeah. uh, if you get to the core of what does it mean to be a real manufacturer, Bompa absolutely is it. I want to ask a more management question because if you look around the broader industry, you notice that there's almost this game of musical chairs with executives where they bounce around to different leadership roles. You have this different experience where you've been able to really identify and understand a brand, right, mm -hmm. and, and lead it. What has come from that in terms of learnings, especially as it pertains to Blanc Pond and having a longer tenure with a brand so that you can get deeper? Have you felt something uh, with that? Yeah, um, for me, that's, you know, again, brand like Blanc Pond is, for me, not first a marketing strategy and then you develop a, pro a product to, to fit that. And uh, you look at market strength, you look at the short term uh, success, but the product gives afterwards the strategy, actually. So the heart at the beginning is that. And if you have to see it, a movement is five, seven years uh, of development. Mm -hmm. So you cannot look at only market trends and think today's and next year. And if I would think I change every five years, every seven years, I would not even have seen my first baby. Uh, really when I leave. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a complete other thought, uh, a, a different approach. And personally, I believe in the higher you go, the more extreme you go, the longer development times, the more uh, care and the details you do. Because that's at the end the difference. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do something that's very close, um, much higher volume, much more automated, much uh, uh, more accessible uh, with that but you will not get the details of it. You will not get go to the end. You will mm. not, you know, a bumper for me should be more beautiful when you have it a month, two months, six months, a year, than for yourself and you discover things than when you buy it. And that's, you only get that by, you know, I, I'm never happy with the product. So there's always a next one. Mm -hmm. There's always something saying, hmm, you know, and this, you cannot do that in the short term. Uh, you cannot, uh, in, continue evolving, you know, that's, that's, look at the 50s, 2003, 
brought it back to so 20 years ago mm -hmm. uh, to seven uh, the, the today's model uh, and still you know, mm -hmm. you know you see little detail touches on a, on a new version uh, but not changing because it's it's still almost in development I mean so uh, it's a strategy that is 10 15 years uh, uh, or longer and if you want to do the right developments the right way for me you have you, I don't see how you can do that with the view of two years three years four years mm -hmm. uh, it's just not even what do you start you know automatically you take things that are proposed that are basic finished that you can react and that's completely different approaches and uh, uh, for me different ends different kind of brands because you have another end where it's much more fashion for a follow-up here that we were discussing earlier before on camera, this concept of the evolving idea of what a watch means to a wearer mm -hmm. and how it's changed so much in the last 20 years. What do you feel a watch means now? And what does a Blancpain watch mean now? <laughs> and how do you make that message known to the person that ultimately maybe doesn't know that they want to wear it to eventually wear it? For me, the first thing is emotion. You, know, you have many elements. It means, um, probably passion or interest for mechanics, maybe interest for history, but the main uh, thing that you get from a watch from Blompa, for me, is actually nothing reasonable or measurable, but it's, you know, it gives you this moment of, of happiness, of emotion, of mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not only the look, the look must be, because if you have something that is excellent, highest precision, it's like, mm, yeah. If you don't I like, don't it, like it, it, yeah, doesn't matter. Why would you mm -hmm. get, get that? Mm -hmm. no. So the look is important, but then you should be able to discover, you know, to appreciate more, and that's when you need the rest that follows uh, the look. So it's it's this combination, and uh, I think this for me, the success is not really the first thing that I look at. Only the sales figures and saying, oh, that's success. No, it's it's seeing when you show your watches or somebody buys a watch. You know, if there's the sparkle in the eye of, ah, the emotion is there, that's the success. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm happy with the watch. And uh, the rest is, is, normally the rest follows um, mm -hmm. when you have a lot of sparkles, mm -hmm. when you think the, the sales figures follow. <laughs> when I first met you, I said I felt like I was in the presence of watch royalty because I, I, your, your family is so important to this industry. If I could ask a very human question, uh, you know, what is it like to be a Hayek? I think the Swatch Group is also at the core of it. It's, it's a company that, yes, it's a large organization, but there's, there's an element mm -hmm. of family here, yeah, right? Absolutely. And I, I just would like to know from your perspective, what is it like? You know, what is it like as somebody who admires this industry? Mm. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I have to say, um, I was a weird child besides uh, ocean and uh, diving and uh, gusto uh, when I was little, huh? six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I started uh, loving watches. And uh, we came a little bit later in the watch industry uh, through, uh, with, uh, through the watch, uh, quartz crisis, actually. Of course. So I was the happiest of the family. <laughs> so, so the love of watches actually came before the yes. business was even there? Yes, yes. For wow. me, yes. Yeah. Um, so I was the first to be a child uh, a bit. Then. I just like watches. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go seven years old, uh, mm -hmm. uh, weekends. Can we go see watches and watch? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, then it happened, you know, and then uh, sh uh, yeah. it was for me um, fun. Um, and you know, the watch side was great, but your question, uh, I think, was, was, uh, didn't change. You know, that's, that's for me just my family and my, my values, like for, for anybody in the family, normally uh, you're not afraid to say what you think and you're not afraid of a conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the same times, if it counts, you will never, you know, neglect or drop the other one. Um, and that's the values, that's the values for everybody. And that's an open, that's also the long term side, you yeah. know. Uh, sure. Family you are, you don't, you're not for two years mm. uh, somehow. And that's the spirit uh, there is. And we have a lot of people actually uh, sitting around here. The people you met uh, today, mm -hmm. um, uh, we work for 20 years or, yeah. or more together. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, uh, you know, it's less working together, a lot became very close friends. You know, it, it is really mm -hmm. a feeling. And I think that's, maybe that's the high idea. Hmm. That's wonderful. 
So before we segue into some watches in front of us, I want to just ask high level strategic for yourself. I mean, where do you see the potential for a brand like Bonpong? I mean, like, where, where do you see things going? Where are some areas of growth? I mean, what is the general strategy right now as you proceed forward with a brand like this? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that, I think, I'm happy that Blancpain became kind of, uh, for me, whole again. Um, because uh, when you look at the history uh, in the, uh, 50s or a bit before the 50 was mainly uh, female watches, mm -hmm. jewelry movement for like the world for other brands for female watches, uh, jewelry watches. Um, very, very, very uh, small uh, movement specialized. And then, uh, but uh, the 50, it was basically exclusive diving sport watch mm -hmm. um, for again 20, 30 years more or less. And then uh, from the 80s uh, to 2000, it was only classic. And uh, you have the right line, you have the movements, you, know, you have the technology, so that's Blomba. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, know, you have to go inside to realize that. First, you say, wait, wait a minute. And uh, for me, all of that is Blomba. You know, that's also part of the, the, the Blomba, of the beauty for me of this history, that uh, the personality that was having the brand uh, influenced it probably more than most brands I know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, left a, a mark. And I wanted to bring that together because I think one is more or less Blompa than other. That's, that's all uh, part of the history and it's all Blompa. And um, that was my goal for the next, uh, last 20 years more or less. Um, that's why bringing the 50 back, but not to have another era of only 50s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was never the goal. Um, and today we are, what? 40%, 50, 30 Villeray, 30 feminine side, uh, uh, not only Lady Bird, but mm -hmm. also Villeray feminine or, mm -hmm. or uh, 50s. And uh, quite happy with that uh, because for me that's that's what Blompa is. Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's a whole brand, it's, it's not just a one, you know. Yeah, and one then one you have brand. tendencies. So mm -hmm. maybe we might have a period coming that the 50 is taking a little bit overhand the mm -hmm. way it looks. And the way, by the way, as you said, it, it is true that in the moment or for some years, what I'm personally very happy, mm -hmm. uh, the diving watch, diving watch look is mm -hmm. very, very trendy, very in, mm -hmm. uh, takes a big space. So we are well placed with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it might be a period where the weight shifts a little mm -hmm. bit, but it's definitely not a strategy to say, yeah. if you need to classic mm -hmm. or complications, by the way, again, um, you will see that in the next uh, two years, okay. uh, three years, okay. Uh, with babies coming out that are not in the 50 and that are highly complicated, but we are talking about uh, five, seven years, eight years development time, mm -hmm. so not new ideas, mm -hmm. uh, but finally coming to, uh, to an end. Mm -hmm. um, so the strategy was always there. Um, and that balance. That's, uh, to balance that, mm -hmm. uh, because the last uh, couple of years uh, was a very strong uh, focus on 50 Fathom, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not uh, only going to be that. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense also. I mean, when a brand can say they not only have an icon, but they have an icon that developed a style of watch itself. I mean, the dive watch would not be what it is without the 50 Fathoms. Let's just say it for what it is. It's the truth. But in front of us, I want to talk about some watches here because I think they tie into the strategic vision of where we go with the future. The elephant in the room is something that is hidden from view currently. <laughs> I would like to start there just because I think it talks about the strategy. Mm. Uh, I find watches as it's an expression of joy. Mm -hmm. And a watch has to give you joy. It doesn't matter the price. Exactly. And I think what we see here is just joy, right? And it could be in all different exactly. varieties and styles. Yes. Could you open this up for us <laughs> first? And then I'd love to just ask, you know, when did this project start? And could you tell us a little bit more? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, actually the newest baby. Uh, the Swatch 50, or Scuba 50, um, more precise. Mm -hmm. um, so one of them, that's the uh, Arctic. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll let you oh, thank you. discover it. And exactly, I could not more agree with what you said. Um, it's, it's pleasure, it's emotion, and it should... For me, that's the negative side of Blompa, the price, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest. The closest uh, to gift that bring out this, this emotion to, to more people. And uh, that was a, a, lot of, a lot of fun to, to, to be able to do that project. Uh, because it, it takes off this side and 
when we look at the details of the valley, I think we got a lot, a lot of plomp and of the valleys and of the fun and of you know opening door for mechanical movements because the love is, is for me is mechanics, mm -hmm. mechanical movement. I have to say, with all the the, 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 the beauty and the rest of the watch, um, without the mechanical movement, mm -hmm. it's for me it doesn't give me the you know, the same the same emotions. What were the characteristics when designing this watch that you wanted to uphold? Because to transition the kind of ethos behind that product and bring it into a style of watch like this, there was definitely some thoughts about the details, right? What were some of the details that you really strongly considered when making this? Yeah, so uh, you have, okay, the, the first, the obvious details that you, you know, it really looks... Yeah, the case. The case really mm -hmm. just looks from the detail of all the one plan on the yeah. 50s. It's got the okay. signature, the, the case signature, signature engraving. swatch. So that's very in your face. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, much, much further than that. Actually, it has uh, from the, the, the crown system for the waterproofness, uh, it has the double uh, O-ring uh, system from the 1952 model. Mm -hmm. um, so we really brought this back to today, um, like the first 50s. Mm -hmm. It got, uh, it fulfilled, by the way, all the uh, diving watch uh, criteria, uh, super uh, with the uh, right length of uh, luminescence, uh, um, uh, holding it up mm -hmm. uh, to fulfill the, the models. Naturally, the unidirectional basal width. You know, we have for me the, the haptic, the, the feel, sound of this is feels extremely cool. important. It feels so quite good too. There were a lot of iterations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have naturally the waterproofness. It's they're tested to 100 meters, but it's 91 meter uh, because we want to communicate the 50 fathom, one fathom. Uh, that's actually a measure, uh, um, measurement uh, of depth, uh, but most people don't know anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we profit to bring that uh, in here, uh, the 50 at the 91 meters. Uh, that's also why it has display back, that uh, you get that uh, same aesthetic, same thickness. It was not possible to do it the swatch way mm -hmm. <laughs> normally. Um, you have. Uh, naturally, the sustainable part uh, of it was an important uh, part as well because that's something that is important for Blanc Pain and for myself. So you have from uh, bioceramic to uh, uh, all the straps are uh, made out of uh, recycled uh, fishing nets. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, naturally, um, last but not least, for me the most important actually um, is uh, the movement. Mm -hmm. It's the system uh, 51. Can you tell us a little bit about the design here as well? Because it's, it's, there's obviously so yeah. a lot of thought there. Yeah, you know, we said uh, yeah, well, it was quite quick. Uh, we got clear that with 50, we have to do you know, probably five pieces. The five oceans that exist uh, around the world with the Arctic, Antarctic, Pacific, Atlantic, and uh, Indo, um, um, Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, but just, you know, how do you bring colors in there? Um, because uh, swatchy, colorful, uh, and typical for an ocean. Um, yeah, corals, everybody knows and talks about corals. Corals are beautiful um, and a big trouble, by the way. But uh, yeah, first of all, as a diver, you don't see the corals. You need light on them. Mm -hmm. Second of all, Arctic, Antarctic, uh, there's not uh, many colorful corals. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I fell in love many years ago when I started the macro photography with these uh, nudie branches. Uh, tiny creatures. Mm -hmm. that keep their color actually underwater, I mean keep, you see it. So it's a different uh, kind of a, a luminescent uh, of color display, um, actually warning not mm -hmm. to get eaten because uh, yeah, I'm poisonous, don't eat me, uh, mm -hmm. because they're tiny. And most incredible and stunning little creatures that even most of the divers just pass by and don't realize them. And uh, every time I uh, start showing photos, they say, yeah, look at that, I see the, the people. Same thing with the watches, you know, <gasps> what's that? And I said, that's the same emotion. So, and there you have the colors, and there you have typical. This is only in the Arctic, uh, that way you can find this uh, newly branch. Then you have to, uh, for each ocean actually, one that is only, uh, can be found uh, in this ocean. Hmm. And that's how the, the story started. Hmm. Um, with, uh, with the movements, with decoration. By the way, what, you, what we see, what you have in the movement, is yes, here the, the Arctic, uh, so it's and the new branch that goes with it. Mm -hmm. uh, all these are um, hand drawn, uh, so it's not uh, a photo taken and just uh, printed. So it's photo, uh, it is really mm -hmm. the original photo, hmm. but they're all um, by also Wait, in house. Yeah, yeah uh, that's very cool. Uh, Before we transition to s some other pieces, what do you want somebody to feel when they put this on their wrist? Uh, be happy, fun. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, it's wonderful. 
So now transitioning, because this is also a big you know, anniversary year, yes. could, we, could we walk through some pieces on the table? Because I think uh, you know, we've already talked about this importance of the 50 Fathoms historically mm -hmm. and you know, what it represents for the brand. So could we walk through uh, some mm -hmm. pieces in front of us? Pleasure. So yeah, that's, that's the, the first that we released, mm -hmm. the Act 1, as mm -hmm. we said. Yes. So it's uh, actually um, a 50 fathom uh, that we have today, uh, but in uh, 42 millimeter, mm -hmm. or 2.3. Uh, same size millimeter as mm -hmm. the See some similarities, yes. Um, but um, uh, also the same size than the 2003 model. So up to now, the only 50 in this size, uh, the model in arrow, was the 2003 uh, launch. That was, uh, uh, yeah, the first modern 50, if I call it. And uh, we did at that time uh, three times 50 pieces for uh, the three regions, Asia, Europe, Americas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we took the same approach uh, again. So it's uh, naturally a little bit adapted. And the case was only used for up to now, yeah, it's a few limited series. So mm -hmm. there's no other uh, uh, case. And it was never the slight different lock protections on the 2003. And now you have actually this size and this model brought to to today mm -hmm. um, and uh, we wanted to start with that too because for me it's yeah, it's double anniversary uh, it's the 70s from the 50 that's the most important and, 20. Uh, and the 20 mm -hmm. from yeah a bit of the new era and the new look that's why uh, we said we started with this one and that's the modern look mm -hmm. and uh, as it is uh, uh, the, the young 50 I would say um, we started with that and tried to say, okay, we want a bit more modern approach. So it was sold exclusively uh, online mm -hmm. and uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, getting, um, being an old brand, but uh, you know, staying uh, young in our minds and mm -hmm. trying to, uh, to go with, uh, with, with the time uh, today, not just to be opportunistic, but to, to reach and cater the needs and, and, uh, and to what, is, what is great of what is happening, developing a lot of things. Uh, and um, so we got our first experiences that were not always easy. The watch was easier to do than actually than the eco. Mm -hmm, sure. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, and, uh, very well received. Uh, just uh, seeing that they are uh, being uh, quite high already, resold of double price. So uh, seems to so far so uh, good. Yeah, people are happy. Um, Showing another wavelength here of yeah. the fifty fathom. Can tell us a little more about this. Yeah, that's actually from the spirit. Um, that's the 50 Tech, so mm -hmm. that should, or is actually the beginning of a new underline in the 50 Fathoms. Mm -hmm. um, and that was created by, hmm, I wouldn't say coincidence, but uh, probably very much like Jean-Jacques at his time, uh, out of a pure egoistic personal kind of curiosity, mm, curiosity and need uh, uh, with uh, Longo Ballesta mm -hmm. because uh, most diving a uh, rebreather, chance to, to dive some, uh, quite some time with him and they're long dives when you go into expeditions. You get three hours, four hour dives, uh, three hours normally the maximum is already a very long dive. He passes that even a bit. And uh, you know, with his saturation dive actually, um, we tested helium valves um, in the case and uh, you can say, wait, wait, you know, I use actually don't you do that when you do the three hour dives longer? You use your watch more than normal. I said, mm. yeah, it's true, you know, but I returned the, the, the dive because, uh, you know, it's first hour, second hour, because it's so much more readable, direct, where am I? Uh, not to calculate, because you have your computer, but the computer gives you the rest time of calculation and the time that you're already down. So, you know, in minutes, you don't have it visual like that. Mm -hmm. I said, actually, I used that a lot, but, you know, can we do something with the, you know, that it's a three hour hand? Uh, and that's how it started. Hmm. And, you know, readability and bigger. I said, hmm. And it started a few years uh, back with, between us, uh, saying, let's do something. We, we did the system on the movement on a, on a 500 fathom case a prototype. I said, wait a minute, we have to do an instrument. You know, we have to dare, and, and that's why the locks are different. Uh, we broke some rules from Blompa, mm -hmm. like a 50 had to look, or watch had to look, mm -hmm. purely to make a you know, the Spirit was first a dive instrument and not a watch, uh, not a wear the watch mm -hmm. as, as every day's watch. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how it's born. So it's the pure spirit uh, actually of the 50. And uh, when it came alive and it, uh, you know, we started wearing it and first it was, yeah, orange outside and we realized by wearing it, wait a minute, luminescent by far not so strong. You can't get that. So actually it's wrong from the use. You know, it looks cool. So it was really 
one tested as pure thinking instrument for us. And yeah, that's why it's called Combessa, because it's mm -hmm. 10 years anniversary. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. really, uh, by the way, the movement, uh, the development is uh, a co-patent uh, from Long and, and myself. Uh, and uh, now it's, yeah, uh, it was launched uh, during an expedition, mm -hmm. um, beginning of this year in uh, French Polynesia and uh, uh, with lives uh, around the world uh, to have uh, people participating and changing and being, having this uh, experience and, and the launch uh, shared where a place where you cannot bring 300 people um, in an expedition in Little Island. Um, so also they are trying to mix a bit, you know, um, modern approach or, or today's technology with this great that gives us these possibilities and uh, to, to, to share more of the of the moment of the passion and uh, it was so well received and uh, you know I seen that uh, we said okay now it became it will become a, a you know other models uh, future um, a family and uh, uh, more watch mm -hmm. <laughs> being sold as a watch that actually yeah. was intended so that's why for me this is Probably the 50 development that has the most spirit, even though it's the least that looks like a 50, it's mm -hmm. the least. That's one of the exceptions where I didn't take any of, of, of the old models out. Normally, you do things and you start. You look and, back, yeah, so they look forward. You, yeah. and, uh, you look at them, mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, that's cool, that's the inspire there. At that, this one, nothing. <laughs> this was purely born today. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, for me, it has the most spirit, probably, how it mm -hmm. was born. Uh, then like the original 50 Fathom. Mm. Um, so that's the act two uh, for our anniversary uh, series, our anniversary year, I would say. And then finally, and, yeah. the crescendo on your wrist here, uh, huh? So the last mm. and the main uh, baby. Thank you. You're welcome. It's the act three. Um, this will be a limited series, uh, 555 pieces. Again, playing a little bit with the 50. Mm -hmm. um, and you see that's the other extreme. This is 100% oriented to the past. Because for me, that's, that's the thing that I would do, expect, and want to celebrate an anniversary, celebrate an icon, mm -hmm. celebrate what Jean-Jacques did. Uh, you know, in one way, keep his spirit alive, because I believe here he lives the most in his spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, that was the diver yeah. uh, doing the instrument. Here, it, that should be the honor of what he did. Yeah, because, reverence uh, to the past, here, yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, naturally, you have the sapphire glass, you have all the, uh, you know, you, have a, uh, you don't have a, you have a bronze gold, so it's a new mixture that uh, doesn't have the corrosion. Right? You will holes in it after a few years, but you still try to get the same as close as possible without being a replica. Mm -hmm. right? so today's, today's movement, uh, it's uh, we push the limit of you know also anti-magnetism uh, uh, much higher uh, in the future. We got to uh, 1,000 Gauss uh, just to improve the quality today. Um, but uh, trying to stay, that's why I say it's not a replica, uh, but we wanted to stay as close as possible uh, of uh, uh, the 50, um, of one of the models uh, in, the, in the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning of the, of the 50 fat. It's beautiful. Moisture yeah. indicator, I mean, I mean, it has the looks, I mean, it's pulled straight out of another era. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it's the other one that's, uh, also, the first time you redo the case, you know, that's the shape of mm -hmm. the original, you know, that's the interpretation of the modern mm -hmm. uh, 50, but that's actually the case uh, how it was um, really at the, in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. Maybe something more to look forward to in the future, who knows, we'll see, you know, you never know. <laughs> never know. <laughs> yeah, there are a few we'll yeah. that might be, you know, yeah. might not be the last that you see in here. Yeah, have lots to look forward to. <laughs> so. Well, Mark, thank you very much for this. I appreciate you being very generous with your time and, uh, you know, just sharing your passion for this beautiful brand. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.